In part A of this question, we have a graph of the centripetal force plotted against the speed of this object. And in that part of the question, we have to figure out the plot's slope when the speed is equal to 9 meters per second. So in order to do this, we need a relationship between the centripetal force and the speed of the object. Now in this chapter, we have learned that the centripetal force acting on an object is equal to its mass multiplied by its speed squared divided by the radius. Now, some of these values were given in the problem. So, for example, the mass of this object was given, and then the radius is as well. The speed varies, and we can see that in the graph, that as this curve kind of moves upward, the speed is increasing along with the centripetal force. So the speed is our variable, but the mass and the radius are constant values. Those are not changing. So what we're going to do is plug in those values right now. We'll plug in 77 kilograms and then we plug in the radius of 74. Now, we will omit units for clarity in this case, but we'll come back to them in a moment. Why don't we just go ahead and divide the 77 by 74 to simplify it, and we should get approximately 1.0405, and then we have V squared. Now, let's think about the question. We need to calculate the slope when the speed was equal to nine meters per second. Now in a calculus course, you learned that slope is the same thing as the derivative of your function. So if we look back at the graph, we can imagine that at some point, perhaps around here, the speed is equal to nine meters per second, and we need to find the slope of the curve. And the slope of the curve is again, the same thing as the derivative. So we need to take the derivative of our force function. We're going to take the derivative of force with respect to our variable, which in this case again is the speed. Now this is just a simple power rule. We multiply the coefficient by two. This is going to give us 2.081. And then we subtract one from the exponent. So two minus one, of course, is just one. There is our derivative. And now all we have to do is plug in the value that we were given for the speed. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in nine. And when you simplify this, you should get approximately 18.7. Now, as for the units, we think about the graph. We know that we're plotting force against speed. When you learn slope, you probably initially learned it as a change in y over a change in x, basically speaking. Well, in this case, the y is the force. So we could say change in force, and then the x is the speed. So we'll put that over change in speed. Let's think about the units for force and speed. Force, of course, is measured in newtons, and then speed is measured in meters per second. And what they might do in the homework is they might simplify this. They might say, okay, newtons divided by meters per second. When you're dividing fractions, you do what is sometimes called keep change flip. So you keep the newtons, but then you change the division to multiplication, and then you flip the other fraction around, so it's seconds over meters. So that would be the correct unit. It's going to be a newton times a second per meter. That finalizes the answer to part A. So we can go to part B now. And in part B, we have a different type of plot. We have force once again, but this time it's plotted against the period of this object's motion. Now, they ask again for slope. They say, what is the plot's slope when the period is 2.10 seconds? So we need to come up with another equation involving force and period. And to do that, let us recall that the speed of an object in uniform circular motion is equal to the circumference, or 2 pi r, divided by the period. And if you solve this equation for, well, I take that back. In fact, I think it's going to be wiser to just leave it in terms of v, because let's think back to our force equation from earlier. The centripetal force was equal to the mass multiplied by v, and we're going to make a substitution here. So we're going to fill in 2 pi r over the period for that v. And then don't forget to square it. And then this is all over the radius. We're going to drag this equation below because we're going to have to simplify it. So one way to simplify the numerator is to write out that term 2 pi r over period twice. Because we're squaring it, so we have to multiply it by itself. And then this is all over the radius. Now continuing simplifying the numerator, 2 pi times 2 pi is going to be 4 pi squared. You can put the 4 pi squared in the front here. And then the r times the r, of course, is r squared. And then the t times the t is t squared. The t squared is going to be in the denominator. But then we also have another factor of r in the denominator. So that's down there as well. Now we can actually simplify further. r squared divided by r is just r in the numerator. So we'll cancel out a factor of r. And now we are in good shape here because we have force as a function of the period. But in order for us to proceed in calculating the derivative, because remember, we want the slope of this curve, we need to simplify just a little bit further. So what we can do is multiply the denominator 
by t to the minus 2 as well as the numerator. And that's effective because when you multiply t to the 2 and t to the negative 2, you get t to the 0 because you add those powers, and t to the 0 is just 1. So basically this is all over 1, so we have 4 pi squared times m times r times t to the minus 2. It's all over 1, but we don't need to write that. Now we're ready to compute the derivative. So this time our variable is the period. Remember that graph was a graph of force plotted against period. So period was your variable. All of these are constants. The mass and the radius are constants. In fact, we might wish to plug those back in right now just to further simplify. So there we have it. We've plugged in the mass and the radius from earlier. Why don't we pick up our calculators and just multiply all of these constants out? And when you do that, you're going to get a big number here. We'll copy it down. And then this is t to the negative 2. This is probably the best form now to take the derivative. So we're going to do the derivative of force with respect to our variable, which is period. And then we'll do another power rule. We're going to multiply the negative 2 by that coefficient. And we're going to get a negative and even larger magnitude number. So we'll write this all down. And then we have our variable t. And then we subtract 1 from the original power. This is going to become negative 3. Now, all we need to do is go back up to the question in part b and figure out what the period was. And it was given as 2.10 seconds. So we'll come down here and we'll just plug in 2.10 seconds for the period t. There we have it. You could pick up your calculator and type that in. When you do so, you should get the following number. And now all we need to do is figure out the units. Well, we have force divided by time. So we could just say that the units are newtons divided by seconds. And that is the correct answer to part B. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. But of course, please do not feel obligated to do so.